All right, a key goal of this class is to help you understand what modern science is and how it works. The whole scientific method, the whole scientific process, that's why most people take an astronomy course, is it to fulfill their requirement for a science. So before we get to the more details of what science is and how it works, first thing I want to do is make sure to convince you that that's important for you to know, that it's vital and essential and important for you to understand. I mean, okay, so why do I care about science? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things we can think about. Technology, and we can think about industry, and all these ways that science has affected our lives. I want to go big scale. I want to look at a historic level. I want to look at the largest possible historic level, because I think if you do that, if you look at history, the great, amazing scope of human history, what you find is that the development of science is, without a doubt, the most important event in human history in terms of how average people live their lives. I mean, historians spend all this time studying kings and presidents and wars and battles and generals and all these sorts of things. But you know what? I think that all that stuff pales in comparison to the amazing, huge, enormous effects that science has had on our everyday lives. And I think once you start to get a sense of the scope of history, how much history there is, how long human beings have been around, and exactly the enormity of the impact science has had on what we expect out of human life, I think you just begin to, well, that helps you to realize that science is colossally important, an immensely, fantastically important thing that everyone really should understand. So first of all, if we're going to go big, if we're going to go for the big enchilada, all of human history. How long have human beings been around? Well, archaeologists tell us when they start studying, you know, remains and skeletons and things like that, that human beings had evolved by basically about 100,000 years ago. So this is human beings. 100 thousand years. That's an enormous period of time. That's a vast period of time. And when I go back a hundred thousand years, I'm not talking about Ugg, the caveman here, the semi-human ape man or something like that. No. I'm talking about people that, as far as we can tell, are modern and as, as, as we are, as, as the same in our genetic capacity for intelligence, for talents, for abilities. Human beings evolved, developed in Africa by about 100,000 years ago. They had evolved. If we understand things right, basically, if you were to take a, a, a baby born to uh, human beings in Africa 100,000 years ago and bring that kid forward today and get him a set of adopted parents, that kid would be a, probably be able to develop and become an average, ordinary person just the same as you or I. So human beings have been around for a vast, enormous period of time. 100,000 years, what does that give us? That gives us about 5,000 generations. Think about that, looking before you at your parents and your grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents, and there are 5,000 generations of people living before you. So what were their lives more like? What, what was it like to be most of these people? Well, first of all, throughout most of human history, at least 90% of this, people were living as hunter-gatherers. Okay, so they're living in small groups, they're hunting, they're picking things, they're beach combing, they're harvesting this and that and the other, constantly moving around in a nomadic lifestyle. Uh, these people uh, certainly don't know how to read and write, so they're illiterate. They can't do math or anything like that, more than probably what they could do with their fingers. They have the same capacity for intelligence that we do, but they haven't learned how to do all these sorts of things. Their knowledge of history goes back only as far as the memories of their parents and grandparents. Their knowledge of other peoples and cultures are limited to the people they've actually met. Um, and, and then when you start looking at the demographics of this, again, it's very hard to tell exactly, but the demographics are quite grim. The vast majority of the people who lived as hunter-gatherers, you know, through at least the last 90, the first 90,000 years of human history, everybody's living as a hunter-gatherer. Well, what's that life like? And the statistics on that are pretty nasty. First of all, what's the average lifespan? How long are you going to live? Well, life, lifespan, as best we can estimate it, is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of an average lifespan of 30, 35 years. Now, this is not to say some people didn't get old. All cultures, all civilizations have their elders. But the reason why this is so low is, first of all, infant mortality. Infant mortality. Basically, roughly about half of all babies born do not live up to adulthood as a result of disease, as a result of starvation, as a result of malnutrition, all these sorts of issues. And so that's about 50%. And then on top of that, roughly about half of all women died as the result of uh, complications during childbirth. A rather dangerous thing if you don't have modern medicine around. So women 
In childbirth, about 50%. And so that brings these numbers way, way down. So, you know, okay, it's, it's fine to be out there hunting the buffalo and all that if you're not sick. But man, if you get into trouble, you want a doctor around, and this is, this is a pretty serious thing. Plus, you know, this whole issue of malnutrition is, 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 is very real. I didn't even know what vitamins were until, you know, a couple hundred years ago. So this is a very big deal. Times of starvation, you know, wintertime and all this, this, this existed in all, in all these hunter-gatherer sorts of groups. Disease, accidents, problems, all these sorts of things that cause human lifespan to only be about 30, 35 years. Okay, so that existed for at least the first 90% of human history. Tell, oh, I don't know, and tell the development of agriculture. Agriculture. Okay, again, I'm doing history on the big scale, the grand scale, so we can see exactly how important science is. So the people learn how to farm. They learn how to grow wheat and rice and uh, the oats and barley and all that sort of thing. They learn how to herd around sheep and goats and all this sort of thing. They're there. This is basic farming. And first people do this in villages. And so now they've got a more regular source of food. But on the other hand, then population density goes up. You got more people living around. So what happens? Well, what's, what's human life like for the average person? Well, lifespan with the development of early agriculture is roughly about 30, 35 years. Why is it about 30, 35 years? Well, about half of all children die in, child, die in childhood, about half of all women die in childbirth. There you go, there's early village lifestyle. And then, oh, civilization. Okay, so there's the development of agriculture. Now we got civilization. Civilization, meaning cities. Okay, now that's going by, I don't know, about 5,000 years ago, ago. And uh, now we've got, you know, the great civilizations of ancient Egypt, ancient China, Mesopotamia, the pyramids, palaces, you know, big armies, wars, all this kind of thing like that. What's it life like for the average ordinary people in one of these great ancient civilizations? Well, the average lifespan is about 30, 35 years. Uh, you know, about half of all children die in childbirth, about in child, childhood, about half of all women die in childbirth. Again, now you've got bigger population densities, and so food is a little more predictable, but then you've also got these things called plagues, these diseases which sweep through and kill whole numbers of people and all that sort of thing. So there's ancient civilization. Now, what about uh, Greeks and Romans? Okay, the golden civilizations, is, you know, the, the Han Dynasty in China. So we've got like Greece and Rome. Great Chinese civilization, China, cool stuff going on in India, amazing things, developments in science and mathematics and literature and people are writing things and advanced mathematics and all this is going on. But what's life like for the average ordinary person? Well, lifespan is roughly about 30, 35 years. Again, I'm talking the average person. If you're the emperor, well, it might be a little different. But for the average ordinary person, typical Joe in the street walking down the streets of Rome, Average lifespan about 30, 35 years, about half of all children don't live to grow up because of starvation and disease and this and that and the other thing, and half of all women, and okay, well there we go, there's, there's classical civilization. Ah, what's next? The medieval period, the Middle Ages. Middle Ages, ooh, castles, knights, mm, you know, jousting, all that kind of stuff in Europe, other things, other places. What's it like to live around in there? Well, average lifespan is about 30, 35 years. Uh, half of all children die in childhood, half of all women, again, roughly ballpark. It's hard to estimate these exactly, but somewhere in that neighborhood. Roughly the lifespan, lifespan is still roughly 30, 35 years. Okay, what's after the Middle Ages? Ooh, ooh, the European Renaissance. You know, you got Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, a great flowering of art. So we got the Renaissance. Renaissance. This spawns the scientific revolution. We're gonna talk about all these people, Copernicus and Galileo and Newton, and you know, the scientific revolution. Scientific revolution. This takes us up, you know, Renaissance, 1400s, up through scientific revolution, 1600s. What's life like for the average person in, say, Europe, this, thing going, this time period? Well, the average lifespan is about 30, 35 years. About half of all children don't live to grow up. About half of, yeah, okay, you got the story again. Okay, all the way forward, let's do through the Age of Enlightenment, the United States. All the way up to the United States 200 years ago early 1800s. USA, early 1800s. 
what's life like for the average person? And you know, we got this great new country going on, the frontier, all this freedom, wonderful, great ideas, democracy, all this, but average lifespan is about 30, 35 years. About half of all children don't live to grow up. One half of children. About half of all women die in childbirth or as a result in complications. You know, still rough numbers, but <laughs> there we are. There we go. Right up until 200 years ago, through 100,000 years of human history, and the most basic measure of the quality of life. How much life do you get? How long do you live? Needle has not moved. It's going, you know, all these factors are going on in different ways of living, different ways of eating. We're on the, you know, we're hunting and gathering. We're on the farm. We're building pyramids. Doesn't matter. Life to the average life, average person is still, still relative, still very short. And then it happens. And then in the 1800s, these amazing, wonderful, extraordinary things happened that finally change the nature, what you can expect to get out of a human life. And so, let me put this on there. Then in the 1800s, that's finally where we see science meets medicine, meets human health. So mid-1800s, that's where we see science meets medicine. I mean, every culture has doctors, you know, every culture has witch doctors, whatever. People who are, you call and they come over and they, you know, shake the rattles and they give you something to drink and they do things. Because every culture knows we've got to do something about this. But the vast majority of all these traditional things, well, they don't, they don't do that much compared to modern medicine. Uh, you know, certain things have some effects. I'm not arguing that. But, you know, in the long run, if I, you know, if I got a serious problem, well, modern medicine helps. And this is where we get amazing things, extraordinary things. That's the leap where you see people like Louis Pasteur who develops this idea that in the dust there are these microscopic little things that float around and make us sick. This is where people begin to develop, develop vaccines, where you have vaccinations against serious disease. This is where you have people, uh, somebody like to, people like John Snow over in London who figures out that, hey, people are getting sick because their drinking water is connected to uh, the, uh, the toilet water, and hey, let's build better uh, systems for sewers and better drinking water systems, and suddenly people in cities start living a whole lot longer when the water they're drinking isn't contaminated. We see the development of modern civil engineering to, to bring people fresh water and deal with the waste. And you see the development of modern agriculture. And now we begin to, we begin to see things like fertilizers and more productive farms and the Industrial Revolution. And science means medicine and we get engineering, engineering, modern agriculture, the Industrial Revolution, all these things somehow together they make the miracle happen. And suddenly, all of a sudden, instead of everybody, you know, the average lifespan being ooh, 30, 35 years, like every other civilization that's ever been on the face of the earth from the very beginning, all of a sudden, there's this explosion in human lifespan. Lifespan doubles and more. I don't know, what's the average lifespan in this country? 75, 80 years, something like that? Well, that's twice as much as it used to be for every other culture, civilization, group of people around in the whole world. And that's the result of modern science. So if you're more than 30, 35 years old, well, science has something to do with this. I love you know, asking the question, all right, a show of hands in this room, uh, has modern medicine saved you from either death or major, uh, major problems, major uh, handicaps, sort of thing like that? At least half the hands grow up, go up. And of course, that doesn't even count all the people who don't get major sicknesses that they would have got, except they had vaccinations and things like that. And they had good nutrition and they had all sorts of things. Modern science has revolutionized our lives for the better, so we need to know what science is and how it works.